Hey, greetings YouTube. Performance reviews where I give the review from the technician's point of view. And today we have something different. We have a rug doctor, but not the model that I'm familiar with. Not a model I have personally ever used. We have their new consumer model. And this has a rather small, under a gallon size tank. So this is for doing a smaller area or somebody who wants that stop gap between a more professional machine like the regular Rug Doctor X3 or the Bissell Big Green Machine, but for whatever reason wants the smaller machine. And I guess it's a little bit lighter, but not by much. As you know, carpet cleaners tend to be pretty heavy. We have a dirty water tank here. Of course, this one has been used. And this one, I wanna uh, thank our Patreon supporters who made this happen. One of our local Patreon supporters loaned us this machine to the channel for us to use. So big thank you to them. Underneath here, we have a brush roller, a really thick brush roller, and you can see, kind of have a choo-choo train going on in the rear. That's something Rug Doctor did on their other design. Why they went for a brush roller and this seems a little complex to me. This brush roller is, this brush roller is driven by its own motor. I didn't film it, my apologies, but I did go in here and this does have a solenoid, a pump, a suction motor, one fan, full bypass, and it does have a separate motor for the brush roller. So those are all separate things to be aware of. The tank does have a float in it, and then it does have accessories. We'll get to that a little bit later. The other thing that's a little bit peculiar is you have this knob, which enables this rear sprayer. Very, very peculiar that it can spray in two places, front and back. It just sprays out one place in the bottom. And traditionally, rug doctors would have two sprayers. So they went for front and back rather than left and right. Strange to me, but okay, w whatever. Uh, I guess the other thing we'll address is how the tools go on real quick. We have this connector that goes on right here the circle in, push down, and then this is going to connect. This is going to remind everybody of the old Royals, Dirt Devils, and the old Hoovers that connected like this. And again, we match up the circle and lock it there. And now you have a upholstery tool, and that's all there is. There's nothing besides an upholstery tool. So there's no way of putting a crevice tool or anything else on this. The tools come on and off easy enough. One thing I did notice is they do tend to leak water on the side. There's no valve on here like some of the other extractors. The hand tools are straightforward and easy enough to use. There's no swivel or anything right here. So this hose has quite a bit of a memory and does kind of fight you a little bit. So you will have to work around that, but they are just like any other hand tool I've used on a carpet extractor. So you'll want to drain this over a sink in between uses. Up top, the handle is very simple. We have a rug switch and a tool switch and an off in the middle. And then we have our soap dispenser right here. The handle release does lock in multiple positions. So depending on your height, you can adjust it. That's kind of nice. Rug Doctor does make some fantastic chemical. Though for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using the regular chemicals I use when I clean carpet. I have video probably on all three of these products by now, but I really like the Lindhouse solution for an overall carpet shampoo. I also really like using Procyon, and I like pre-treating and using the Pet Stain Eliminator by Unique. All of these are fantastic products. I do recommend them. I'll have links below. You can also usually get Unique at your local vacuum store and a lot of times at Ace Hardware's. So call around and look for that there as well. Now, as far as the clean water tank is concerned, it comes out easily enough. You have a nice wide area where you could fill this and this will make it easy for bathroom sinks and awkward sinks to make this work. Now there's a soap measuring cup here and it will be in ounces right here in milliliters right here. Do not just fill this whole thing up. This is about a half gallon of water or so. So because of the size of the tank, do not fill this up all the way. 
make sure you follow the instructions of the cleaner that you're using. In this case, I'm going to use Lindhouse and I'm gonna measure it out perfectly before I go fill it because I do not want to put too much soap in here to give you an idea how much we're gonna use. That's about how much soap with a non-concentrated soap that we're using. So do not just go filling this up with detergent. Less is more when we are carpet cleaning. Now, of course, the first thing you wanna do before you clean your carpet or even pre-treat it is to vacuum it thoroughly. Now you'll notice I didn't just make one pass, I made two passes and I crossed the paths going different directions to thoroughly clean the carpet. I'm using a central vacuum, but whatever full size vacuum you have, do not expect this to work if you're using a cordless machine or some bagless machine that doesn't clean very well. You want to at this point go ahead and pre-treat any spots you have I like to use this sprayer. Now you're gonna to have to forgive the noise floor, but we've switched to the studio microphone. You're gonna hear the real sound of the machine running. So you're gonna get an idea of what this thing sounds like. I do wanna warn you, a regular rug doctor and most extractors do require ear protection. So if you're wearing headphones, maybe be prepared to turn that down. This is going to be a little bit loud. <laughs> Well, I have done a 10 by six foot area and I have run out of solution. There's no indicator. You kind of have to just pay attention to what's in here, but I've run out of solution and well, we haven't extracted very much of that. So it appears the suction is not particularly strong on this one. Because I'm not exactly pleased with how this has left the carpet so far, and its extraction ability, I am just gonna go ahead and run some Procyon and rinse the carpet a pass or two over every area. And Procyon is described as an acid rinse with cleaning ability. So this ought to help the carpet not become sticky or weird. This is what the carpet looked like Afterwards, I've done about three wet passes with the Linhouse shampoo, and then I did a pass with the Procyon and just a dry pass to make sure everything was dry. 
and this is the result. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. You really do have to make more passes with this than you do in other machines in this price point. Do I recommend this version of the Rug Doctor? Well, that's a conditional buy. At the full MSRP right now, it is $500. And I feel like that is a bit stiff for what you are getting. I believe you'd be better off spending the extra $50 to $100 to get the proper Rug Doctor that does a much better job and holds more liquid and is objectively better built. I think if you were to get this machine for half the MSRP or even 60% of the MSRP, it would make a little bit more sense. But where it currently sits in the market, I don't see a great reason to buy this. I also think objectively the Bissell Big Green machine is a better value at the same price. So appreciate you folks watching. If you want to know more about this machine or the current prices, I'll put the link below. I'm also going to put at the end here a link to some of the other carpet cleaners and solution I've reviewed. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs>